Recording in progress. Recording stopped.
Yeah, I'll tell me for long. Jamela. Jamela. Hello. Morning. Yes. Morning. Good morning. I'm fine, thanks. How are you, ma'am? Fine. I just want to make sure that my video is switched off, please, because now it's indicating to me that it, it, uh, it's on, but the, I, uh, but in, in, when it's signed in my phone, it's, say it, it's, it's muted, but it's not.
Recording in progress. Recording stopped. Recording in progress. Good morning, members and uh, the CGE. I've just spoken to the chairperson right now. She has requested honorable recording to stopped. Start the meeting. She will join soon. Thank you. Good morning, uh, honorable members. Uh, uh, Chairperson, CEO, uh, Deputy Chair. Uh, good morning. 
Morning. Good morning. Morning, Chair. Morning, Chair. Morning, Chair. I was struggling due to network. All of us. All of yeah. us. I was trying to log in and log in, and this thing was giving me problems. I thought this thing is happening only when I'm in Cape Town, but today I've seen it, but even here in Kauteng, it does that sometimes. But anyway, all of, yes. So you were struggling too? A person. Okay, okay. Okay, thank you, uh, honorable members. Uh, I declare this meet. You are all welcome. I declare this meeting officially open. Uh, on Sunday, we are bearing our one of our honourable members, Honourable K. B. Mapatswe. Um, so um, we are losing uh, members of Parliament each and every week. Uh, but I don't know this week. We are hoping that God to this week will not uh, uh, call any one of us. Um, but at least uh, may his soul rest in peace. And uh, yeah, let's continue to adhere to uh, the regulations, COVID-19 regulations. And uh, also ad ad advise our families, uh, our communities to go and take uh, the, the vaccine. Because you know there are people who are reluctant to take it. Uh, but I think uh, when we advise them, at least they will have that interest of going and, and, and take the vaccine. But yeah, um, without any waste of time, uh, I have received two apologies from the, uh, the chairperson of FCGE, which is the apology for Umam O'Hara, Commissioner O'Hara, and uh, Commissioner Mazibuko, who are attending that case, Yaga Mamum Konza. Um, we, we, we all went there with Honorable Mkweba, and I'm happy that uh, CGE is still following that case and up to the end. Thank you very much, uh, Chair and Deputy Chair, that uh, uh, truly you have taken- Recording in progress. That at least you are always uh, deploying your commissioners to go and attend to that case and to your legal team. Thank you very much, uh, uh, Chairperson. And those are the two apologies that I have received. And uh, let me check from Neliswa if there are other apologies. Neliswa. Thank you, Chair. Good morning, Chair and members and the CGE. I've also received two um, apologies from two members, one from Honorable PT and Honorable Sondi. Both of them will not be able to attend the meeting. So thank you. Okay. Okay, those are the only apologies that we have received today. Uh, can I get a move for the adoption of those apologies? Honorable Masibo, Masigo is driving. Honorable uh, Masigo. But I, I don't know whether she has all, already logged in, but uh, she called me, she's- I've she's logged in, I've logged in, I've logged in. Okay. Okay, thank you very much. Can I get a mover for the adoption of those uh, apologies? Uh, okay, thank you, Ma'am Sengwa. Yes. Okay, can I get a second? Honorable Masondo. A second, Chair. Thank you very much, Honorable Members. Let's move to our next item. Uh, can I get a, 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 a agenda? Uh, let's go straight to you, Chairperson. Uh, good morning um, to you, Chairperson, and uh, um, a very good morning to honorable members. Um, uh, 
and yeah, bonga chair. I'm using my computer. <laughs> Uh, Chair, I have no comments about that. I just wanted to comment that um, after you struggled with four, fourth industrial revolution in terms of connection, Chair, uh, okay. this is the comment that one is getting. But thanks a lot, Chair. Thank you very much. Um, Chair, I'm sending greetings to um, the Honorable Chairperson of the committee, um, the, the Honorable Whip and Honorable Members. Um, and Chair, this morning we've been invited as the Commission for Gender Equality to brief the Portfolio Committee on the progress made with regards to the implementation of the um, National Strategic Plan on Gender-Based Violence and Femicide and respond um, to the following uh, particular areas. Um, the first area that we will brief uh, the Portfolio Committee on is the performance uh, report on the assessment uh, of the emergency uh, of the presidential uh, emergency uh, response action plan and look at how far the implementation has gone in terms of a rapid assessment that was done by the commission for gender equality on the 22 government departments initiatives in terms of um, implementing the six months uh, ERAP uh, uh, implementation plan. The second area, Chairperson, that we will update the, uh, the committee on is the performance in relation to the re-establishment of the Gender-Based Violence Council following our brief report. And, and I think our brief appearance um, on the 9th of March this year, we did um, brief the committee on the progress made um, in terms of assessing the establishment of a national coordinating structure on gender-based violence and femicide. And um, in this particular report, uh, Chair, uh, which is called, um, um, I, I think it's a, it's a 2020 report, both the ERAP as well as the ass assessing the structures uh, on gender-based violence are both the 2020 reports. Um, and this report uh, basically follows um, the assessment or the presidential summit on gender-based violence, uh, where the summit actually articulated the critical interventions in the declaration uh, that came out from that summit, calling for the establishment of a one coordinating structure with multiple stakeholders in the form of government, as well as 51% of civil society organizations participating in that structure as members. Um, we also came out of that summit chair with um, a declaration that called for one monitoring and evaluation a framework, um, and um, that framework basically was a framework that was going to collect information and data and monitor and evaluate the responses and government implementation of the GBV programs. And also today we will update you on that. And lastly, Chair, we will update the committee on the Gender-Based Violence um, National Strategic Observatory Working Group, uh, where several meetings have actually taken place and, um, and all of that culminated into a document um, or a concept document that has been developed jointly by CGE as well as Sanganani Institute. And the deputy chair who was uh, participating at this level will provide more detail on this. The rest of the reports and presentation chair will be done by the CEO. And with your permission chair, I would like to hand over to the CEO to actually provide a brief um, presentation on the progress made on these areas mentioned above. Thank you very much chair. Thank you very much, Chairperson. Over to you, CEO. Thank you, Honorable Chair. Good morning and good morning to Honorable Members and my Commissioners. Um, I'm, I will just project the report that was submitted uh, while I speak to it. Um, I hope it is projecting now. Yes, CEO. Thank you, Honorable Chair. Um, as the chair has alluded to, the different areas that we were requested to provide an update on were 
uh, as follows. Uh, it's about uh, five areas, uh, noting that uh, some of the areas were a, a repetition. Uh, so we, the different areas that we identified with uh, five. Uh, starting with the first area um, that the chair has alluded to, uh, perhaps to give, to start with a quick background before we get to where we are as the CGE in terms of evaluating the implementation of the ERA or the Emergency Response Action Plan. Um, we, we, we do know that uh, this plan uh, came about uh, after the 2018 presidential summit and uh, it was given a period of six months uh, as an emergency response and about uh, 22 departments were given targets to achieve within the six months. The targets were broken down around um, about five themes as listed there, access to justice for victims and survivors, changing the norms and behaviors through high level prevention efforts, uh, an urgent response to victims and survivors of gender-based violence, strengthening accountability and architecture for adequate response to GBV and femicide, and also interventions for women's economic empowerment. So these five themes were broken into 81 targets across 22 departments. The initial um, a, 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 a assessment of progress in terms of the six months implementation uh, revealed as we had presented, as the chair has indicated that of the 81 targets across the five themes, uh, only 17 targets or 21% were achieved um, within the six months period, 12 were uh, partially achieved and 51, which was about 64%, were not achieved within the six months. Uh, we launched the ERAP report uh, in April, and during the launch, we, the CGE announced to the media that we would uh, do an interim follow-up with the 22 departments. And that we uh, eventually did. And of the 22 departments, initially seven responded, but later on uh, another department responded. So we had eight departments respond to the interim follow-up that was done. And the departments that responded are listed there, including SAPS, NPA, COPTA, National Treasury, SALGA, uh, the Department of Basic Education, Correctional Services and DPSA. And when we reviewed uh, the responses to this interim follow-up, we classified uh, the responses into three categories, uh, which was significant progress made uh, or some progress made, but not significant and also no significant progress made. And uh, I want to um, perhaps just reiterate that this was following the main uh, formal evaluation that was done over a period of time by the CGE from where the, 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 the main report that was launched was produced. Um, so our review of the res uh, response letters from two departments, which are National Treasury and the NPA, showed that some progress was made in relation to outstanding targets. However, the progress reported appeared insignificant. Uh, these two entities fall under category B, as we have indicated. So they have made some progress, but not uh, significant if you look at the targets uh, that were provided. Uh, three departments out of the, uh, the, the seven that responded were categorized at C. Uh, these were the Department of Basic Education, Correctional Services, and, and COGTA. Um, this is because the information that was uh, provided through the response letters uh, from this entity show that very little progress had been made in relation to the outstanding targets um, as they were reported in the main study of the, in the main uh, assessment of the implementation of ERAP. 
Um, the DPSA uh, responded post the submitted analysis. Uh, so when after, this is the one department that came later on, uh, but their progress demonstrated that uh, uh, they were under category A, even though their uh, responsibilities are long-term, uh, so to speak, and can possibly be assessed under a different evaluation process, because these are some of the things that couldn't be achieved in six months. Um, so the, the interim report on the review of ERAP, uh, as indicated uh, earlier, uh, was completed in July, and we presented it to plenary internally in the CGE, together with uh, uh, the attached memo, um, proposing uh, different uh, options that as the CGE we can take to hold uh, uh, stakeholders accountable. So these are some of the, 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 the issues that we want to keep following up, uh, perhaps to also indicate that uh, this follow-up actually is, is, is planned for every year in our APP. Uh, honorable uh, members will note that uh, each study that we do uh, whether it's a, a legal investigation, transformation investigations in the public and private sector. Once the study is done, we provide uh, the, the findings and the recommendations to the stakeholders. And then the next, the following year, we, we plan to follow up again on that. So this project is still in our APP this year. And uh, the report that was launched uh, is also attached. That's just for ease of reference uh, because we had already uh, submitted the report, but for, for this particular progress reporting, we, we just put it there for, for ease of access as we, as we present uh, this report. The second, um, uh, area where we were requested to provide an update. Uh, it was the re-establishment of the uh, Council for Gender-Based Violence and Femicide. Um, again, as the chair had, uh, the, the, the CGE chairperson has uh, uh, indicated, uh, this study, a thorough study, you know, an annual sort of study was done uh, by, the CG, by the CGE. And um, the report was also uh, submitted for tabling. Um, so, but I suppose it suffice to say the, the report was also presented. I think it was the subcommittee of, of the, or the study group uh, or, uh, invited by the honorable chairperson. Uh, and the indication in terms of the finding was that uh, the, the, the council had not been uh, established and various findings relating to the challenges in the establishment of the council were also uh, presented. But at this stage, again, this is another project um, that is in our APP. And uh, as we uh, embark on following up again on this establishment of the council, we found that uh, to date, uh, the, the council had not uh, been established. Um, uh, before it was dis uh, the, dis dis the disbandment of the, I uh, the ISC, um, it had not established the council within the six months that uh, was provided for as part of the ERAP uh, response. Uh, so the ISC had also not established the council through the emergency response plan, uh, as I have indicated. Uh, which was scheduled to happen in the six months that was provided in the, uh, as a response to gender-based violence in the country. Uh, the Women's Ministry took over the responsibility to establish the council. Uh, in this regard, the ministry recently reported that process of establishing the council was halted until the bill that regulates the mandate and operations of the council is put in place, and the draft bill is currently undergoing cluster processes. Excuse me. Um, in the monitoring process of the 2021 20 2020-21, the CGTE data collection process revealed that there were plans 
uh, of initiating a board of trustees that would establish the council. Uh, so although some of the participants in this year's study, the current one that we are conducting, shared that the, these plans fell through, but some revealed that a 15 member board was in place. So the CGE is here to, 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 to see uh, uh, members of the board, uh, but then as it was reported in the previous uh, uh, study, there, 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 there tends to be a lack of clarity uh, and, and disjuncture in this process. So it's not quite clear uh, which is which, as we can see the people we're talking to are giving a different set of information, if one can put it uh, in that way. Um, so at the end of the financial year, as we normally do produce, hey, um, uh, yes, ma'am. Um, the board that you're talking about, OT, there's 15 member board, uh, which one is that? Um, Honorable Chair, uh, this, is, this is what we found as we were interviewing people. And, and that's why we are saying here, we are still to see uh, the, the, the members of this board. So this is information provided by people that we interviewed as the CGE. Um, so, and like I said, it's like some people know something and then you interview other people, they talk about something else. So we are not sure uh, of the existence of this board, but we are only presenting what we have been told so far. Um, that's why uh, the, when we finish the, the monitoring for this current financial year, perhaps by the time we publish the report, we, we, we hope it will be um, it will be clear uh, the existence of the board will be clearer whether it exists or not. Okay, uh, so uh, uh, Department of Women they don't know they do they know about this uh, board? Chair, the was we uh, we see with with us also we don't know of any board. Because yeah. if there was a board, a, a, a CEO, a, at least as the portfolio committee, we should have known that there's a board, but there's no board. Because I remember when the Department of Women came to the portfolio committee, there was no board that uh, was, was supported. And there was no board of trustees because uh, we, we did not agree with the, uh, the issue of a board of trustees at first as the portfolio committee. And then uh, even a uh, national treasury did not agree uh, with the report of trustees. So that's why I'm, I'm asking because, um, you know, if uh, you find things like this and uh, we as the portfolio committee, we are not informed, then we'll have a problem. And that's... Uh, 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 but that's that's what we know as the portfolio committee that in fact what we are expecting is for them to submit a, 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 a bill of uh, establ of uh, establishing the the council the gpv council yes so i'm not sure a uh, uh, things that are happening on the site but uh, thank you very much for presenting this to us, uh, what we'll do, we'll, we'll write a, a question to the department so that they can explain on what is this exactly. Because what we know is that the board, the board that that um, committee was disbanded and then there was no other structure that was established. There was no interim structure again. So if they've got something else, then it's a problem for us. But uh, thanks to a CEO, what we'll do, I think Ashifa, you have noted this and uh, we are going to send them a question. Thank you very much, CEO. Thanks, Chair. May I just indicate as well that this is raw information at the initial stages of our monitoring this year and once the study is done, maybe there will be clarity. Uh, because it looks like our key informants 
seem to have different information. So the reality of this is still to be verified by the, <coughs> end of the monitoring period. Thank you, Chair. All right. Yeah. Oh. Uh, Honorable Sheriff. Uh, good morning, Chair. Uh, good morning, uh, everybody on the meeting. Um, Chairperson, I just wanted to, uh, just, to just add to this conversation. Um, so, I, I, I mean, the, the last time we spoke to the department, they said that they have appointed four people um, to, to, to run the GBVF secretariat. Yeah. Uh, and, and, and that was basically the last thing. The Board of Trustees Chair was that uh, they didn't get the permission from National Treasury to do the Board yes. of Trustees. So, so, so that's the information we have. And, and I imagine it's because everything is happening um, after each other. So maybe the research, uh, maybe we need to just get clarity about the research from the CGE and perhaps they just don't have the new information that was shared to us uh, by the department chair. Thank you. Yeah, no, thank you very much, eh, 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 Honorable Sheriff. That's why I was asking eh, the CEO so that eh, so that it, they can also uh, double check with the 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 team who was who identified this, uh, so that we have. Uh, uh, but I don't think they can write something that is not there. What they have given them is something that they 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 discovered. So what we are going to do, we'll send a question to to the department. So thank you, Honorable Sharif, that uh, uh, what I, I, I presented, uh, it's the true reflection of what we know. Thanks, uh, you can continue, CEO. Chair, my hand was up. Oh, Masiko? Yes, thank you, Chair. Good morning, I, I, I have been oh, covered. And Natasha? By, by Honorable Member Sharif, Chair, and as well as you in terms of the explanation in relation to the establishment of the board. What I'm worried about, Chairperson, is the, 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 the way in which information is flowing, um, specifically because uh, we, we, we are reading in this paragraph here that uh, others say the board is there, others are saying, um, or some have revealed that there is a 15 member board in place, which for me is a cause <clears throat> of concern in relation to the transparency of the process itself. Uh, the CEO has, has noted the issue of key informants, and I'm just wondering where this information is coming from. If the department, if, excuse me, if the department is telling us that the board is, is not existing, so where are they uh, sourcing this information from, especially those that are saying that the board is in existence? But I'm covered, Chairperson, by, by Honorable Sharif in relation to a, 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 the, 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 the commission taking us into confidence in relation to the report itself and where the information is coming from. Thank you, Chair. Thank you very much, Honorable Masiko. Honorable Natasha. Thank, thank you very much, Chair, Chair um, and morning members and, and, and uh, commissioners and CEO and Chairperson of CGE. Um, Chair, I, I want to agree with all of you and, and the lighter note of what Honorable Masiko have just mentioned, because it becomes problematic if we have a presentation that sort of try to, to state that the CG is not uh, 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 um, clear in terms of, 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 of the information that they are having here or presenting here in front of us. We need to have information that are clearly stated and they should say, we as the CGE have discovered there is a 15 member board and this board, we don't know where it comes from, but now it's, it's, it's problem. Some even presentation say, some say there is a board, others say um, uh, there, there is, it, is not a board. It must be that information uh, um, that we are getting here as, as the research that they are doing um, come as proper information, not a two-sided um, information. And I agree with you, Chair, in terms of we need to investigate this issue of this board. We can't be having a 15-member fly-by-night board that we don't even know how this board uh, 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 was established and how do we hold uh, this board to, to account. We can't have this. Uh, um, and in on a matter that is so serious, um, a, a fly by night uh, board like this. Thank you very much, Chair. 
Yeah, I think, uh, thank you very much, honorable members, because there's no way that uh, we'll let uh, people who are not legitimate, a legitimate structure to be uh, handling or managing uh, public money uh, on behalf of, 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 of government and uh, when they are not uh, a legitimate uh, 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 structure. What we know, uh, CEO and Chair, is that they, they, what they did, they advertised a post, post for administration, which they told us that they have filled uh, four of, this, of those vacancies, those posts, so that those people will be responsible to, for the establishment of the offices uh, 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 so that uh, when the council is appointed, then the things must, uh, must be smoothly run. Because now if there are other people, uh, it, it cannot be correct, you know, because we are doing this on the site and they are doing something else on the site, no ways. Uh, but thank you very much, uh, CEO. Um, maybe also you need to double check. Yes. Is there another person? Yes, Chair. It's um, Chairperson Matebula. All right. Um, Chair, I just want to clarify uh, one thing very quickly, Chair, um, that um, following the disbandment of the Interim Steering Committee, our understanding as the Commission for Gender Equality Chair is that there was no other structure that was formed after the six months um, interim structure that was disbanded. However, yes. However, Chair, the, the, this information um, before us basically is the information that was collected by the researchers themselves. So there is no definite um, assurance that there is a structure that is there. I think the, 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 those people that were interviewed or participated during the study chair were coming from different areas and different understanding chair. So I would pr uh, propose that uh, for all of us to really understand what is currently happening is to really get the information from the Department of, uh, uh, from the Ministry or Department of Women, Youth and Persons with Disabilities. Um, we also know that, Chair, the council is still not in place. Um, there is a, a document, um, a legal document that is awaited uh, to be approved by National Treasury to actually approve the structure, Chair. So this information is not a definite information. It was information that was collected by the researchers. It may not be a true reflection of what is currently happening, but Chair, please feel free um, to actually write and ask questions from the Department of Women so that we all have a similar information that we can continue um, understanding in terms of the structure moving forward. Thank you, Chair. Yeah, yes, Chair. Chair. Chair Kalamsi. What about Natasha? Is it Natasha? Yes, Chair. Namaso and Donkorn. Oh, okay. Okay, Honorable Ma uh, 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 Natasha, Honorable Masondo, and uh, Sipa uh, uh, Commissioner Sipanya Mohale. Thank you very much, uh, Chair. You know, it becomes chairperson of, of, of CGE, it becomes problemsome, the statements that you have just made. Uh, 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 when you are bringing such document to us, to parliament, we take it that this information is a true reflection. And now you are going back to what one of your commissioners did last time that say, look, I can't do my work. Uh, this and that and that is happening. And then when we wanted a report, you, you guys changed the whole narrative of what was said. And it's happening again. You can't say this is a draft, but it can change at any given time because this is the information that we will take back and it will be all portrayed all over the media. This isn't the information that we as members of parliament will take as truth, as a true reflection what is happening within the department, what is happening within this uh, 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 structures that needs or council that needs to be formed. 
So your your statement, uh, Chairperson, it's very problemsome. Now I'm 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 even hesitant to uh, what what should we believe in this document? What is the the right information and what is the wrong information? Because now you are giving us no, it's not yet a true reflection of what is happening. If there's a 15 member board and the researchers have discovered there are people that are portraying them and put themselves in a board, then that, it, 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 this is the information that we are getting. But now you want to cover it up again and cover for the department and say, no, it, this is not a true reflection. Please don't play with our time. Please don't play with our time and please don't uh, insult, insult our intellectual capacity like this, what you are doing. You are doing it again, what you have done the last time. Please take us serious and take this committee serious. Thanks, Chair. Thank you very much, Honorable Natasha. Honorable Masondo. Thank you, Chairperson. Good morning, Honorable Members. Good morning, CGE. Uh, I just want to get the clarity here, Chairperson that they say it's a raw information. So does that mean that the CGE did not discuss this in their plenary? Or maybe they, they after this meeting is then that they are going to sit down and, and make some thorough investigations about the true reflection of this document. I'm a little bit uh, worried about uh, if maybe they didn't discuss it. And they, that board, where does that account to CGE or the department? And if we, we continue discussing this document, why is maybe something will change or all the, the, the document is going to change? I just want to clarify the chairperson. Thank you, uh, Honorable Masondo. Uh, Honor, uh, Commissioner Sipanya Mohale. Not. No chair, I'll, I'll, I'll pass uh, because I think the, 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 the honorables have actually raised very critical points okay. uh, about, yeah, I'll pass, thanks. Okay. Uh, Honorable uh, Kumani. Thank you, Chair. Anyway, I think I'll also pass the two, the two members have, 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 have covered me really because what I wanted to ask is, do we have to continue with a document that comes to us and we are told it's a raw document? What does that say about the committee? When you are, you, we continue with a raw document, when are they going to bring a true reflection of the document? Does it say they are just meeting with us for the sake of passing their time and adhering to whatever calls that are needed for them to, to, to bring, to bring, to bring uh, the reports to us or they are just playing games with us. That's that's just my worry, really. Thanks. I think, uh, uh, Honorable Sharif. Chairperson, um, I'm sorry to take you back, but um, I was going to raise it when we ask questions, but I think it's very relevant to the discussion right now. Um, Chairperson, when you go to page uh, four of the report uh, uh, on um, CGE chairperson, you speak about the implementation, the continued monitoring of the implementation of the emergency reactive reaction plan, the ERAP. Um, but chairperson, uh, you will remember at Women's Parliament, at, at multi-party Women's Caucus, the department said to us that um, ERAP is done. There will be no more um, implementation of the ERAP. In fact, they're all focusing now on the NSP. So maybe you know, it, 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 it sort of feels like the same thing is happening um, through this report. So I must agree with Honorable uh, Natasha that, you know, if, 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 if there's a little bit of contradicting information that the department that, that the CGE has and that the portfolio committee has, then that is a huge problem. Thank you, Chair. Honorable Kumani and uh, Honorable Sharif, please lower your hands. Yeah. Uh, lower your hands. Uh, Chair, before I invite you, um, I think uh, I want to agree with Honorable Members. Because you see, 
what we must be careful of is the information that is brought in to you yourselves as commissioners and yourself CEO by your researchers. And then um, when you get that information, um, you find yourselves in a, a situation whereby you take it raw as is, and um, at the end of the day, it will put you and uh, in, in, in an awkward spot because you see, for instance, I want to make an example. Uh, it goes to, you remember that report of uh, women, forced uh, sterilization of women uh, that you, you presented. And uh, my question was, yes, you are presenting the report to us, but are the people, are those uh, women being examined by medical doctors so that at least when you present the report to us, we are able to say, yes, they've been examined by doctors and that there is proof that those women have been sterilized. So that, you know, when you, you deal with such information, you have satisfied yourselves that, uh, yes, Chair, we are not medical doctors, but uh, we have also, um, our researchers were working with medical doctors. That's why they are producing a report like this. Because you see, my worry with the honorable members is that somebody will be sitting there outside drafting some things on your behalf and those things be presented to yourselves as a true reflection. And at the end of the day, you find yourselves in the hot seat. So I think uh, our worry and our concern as honorable members is that, that you know, um, it's true that when you present uh, reports in parliament, you should process them first so that you satisfy yourselves that this information is accurate. Uh, because you see, it's not a, a research that was done by yourself, Chair, nor yourself, CEO. So you, you are given a report by your own researchers. And then at the end of the day, we are not even sure on the, the sample that they used to get those, uh, 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 that information. What if they just ask people who don't even know anything about what they were looking for? Maybe they have asked even a person who knew a, a stale report or stale things that uh, there was a board of 15 members that was established. And then this person, because they don't follow up, it's like other people, they don't even follow up. That's why you'll get journalists who will fall, who will be running after us, sending us questions when our when our, our our portfolio committees are open and transparent. If they want to know information, they are serious. They have interest of uh, 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 of the issues that are there. They should be following uh, 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 our portfolio committee so that when they go and write in newspapers. They write things based on the information that is there. They had it themselves. But because they are lazy, they will take nonsensical stories from people and they go run a story which, which is not factual. So we need, as a portfolio committee, we need to protect you also as an, as an organization, as an institution that uh, maybe next time please uh, 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 double check the facts uh, so that when you present something to the portfolio committee, you present something that you have satisfied yourselves. Oh, uh, 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 these are the actual facts and this information you are presenting before us is accurate to avoid a situation whereby as members, 
because Tina always, you see now, as immediately when you presented this, I said, no, we'll have to ask the department. And we don't want to, you and the department to have a stale a relationship whereby uh, uh, these ones will be saying, Nina and these ones will be saying, you are misrepresenting facts uh, to us, whereas it's not you uh, 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 who was doing that research. So maybe uh, uh, let's find a way on how do we deal with reports that are done by your researchers and, uh, and, and check whether the information that they got uh, 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 it's, it's a true reflection or not and process it maybe in your plenaries because uh, this also is going to put us on the spot uh, so we don't want to find ourselves on that because that's why even today uh, we still need that report investigation report of Commissioner Day on the people that were blocking her to do her job in the Eastern Cape. We still need that report. That's why we said uh, uh, we're gonna give you three months. It's because why? We want people to take parliament serious that whatever you present to parliament, remember tomorrow you will be hold, held accountable for the information you presented. And it's all over the media. Yeah, uh, so, uh, uh, we must, we must be careful, eh, 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 all of us and yourselves, that whatever information you present to us, so that you don't find yourselves in, in a hot seat and you read yourself, about yourselves in the newspapers over the weekend, eh, 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 wrongfully so. So eh, maybe a eh, eh, CEO, let's try to manage in information in a, in a better way so that we don't present it in a, in a, in 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 a, in, a, in, a, in a manner that will leave us as honorable members having more questions okay chairperson uh, thank you chair thank you chairperson um, and uh, thank you honorable members um chair i just want to um, apologize up front that we are taking uh, members of this portfolio committee seriously. Um, and um, it's not our intention to appear as if we are not taking uh, this session serious, uh, Chair. Chair, I think we made the disclaimer from the beginning that this um, report, um, it's still uh, at its uh, development stages. So the information is raw, Chair. Uh, and on page four, um, the, 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 the last um, um, bullet actually says that, Chair, at the end of the financial year, the CGE will release a comprehensive final report of its findings on the establishment of the council. And, and I think this was the disclaimer that we, 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 we are making, Chair, to say that this report is still not final and Chair, I just want to appraise the members of this committee that we do have a process internally, that once the information is collected through the research unit by researchers or the legal officers in the legal unit where investigative work is done, usually this is where CGE reports come out from. They come from these two departments. And once those reports, Chair, are finalized, there is an internal process, Chair, of sitting down as the members of a oversight committees. They will go to respective committees for discussions and adoption, and they will be taken to plenary for final adoption, Chair. So this process has not been finalized at, at the um, at, the, at, at, at the level of the oversight committees and at the level of the, of the plenary chair. And I think there was an honorable member who asked if this was adopted at plenary chair. I think um, CEO has actually mentioned that this was at the um, initial stages of collecting information chair. I think the, um, the, perhaps what we could have done as CGE was to actually 
uh, right back to the portfolio committee to say we are not ready to submit and to present a raw report in front of the portfolio committee chair as the report hasn't been taken through a normal process yet. And I think this is something that we will check. And, um, and, and really, again, uh, please accept our apologies. We are definitely not going to take time for it. Thank you. Thank you very much, Chair. I think um, then uh, maybe let's do this, uh, honorable members and uh, uh, our uh, uh, commissioners and CEO. Because we have not processed this report, it's you have in, 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 in the process of finalizing it so that you verify your facts and everything else. So the best way you let let you withdraw the report and we give you a chance to go and finalize it so that when you come to parliament you present a final product, not the raw one, just to protect yourselves also, ne? Uh, because we don't want to see a, 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 a you uh, being criticized unnecessary. Just go back and uh, a, 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 a do the right thing. And then we'll give you a chance. Uh, I think uh, three weeks will be enough I don't know because we'll be going for our um, elections, but uh, nevertheless, uh, let's give you an opportunity to go back and uh, verify your information. Things that you are not sure of, let your researchers give you a right and accurate report so that uh, when we invite you again to the portfolio committee, we invite you and then you'll be coming to present a report that will be confident even yourselves to present because you would have uh, satisfied yourselves with that report and uh, verified your, fa your facts um, to save the integrity of your institution. And also because it will be like you are interfering and you know, we are not interfering Tina, we are doing oversight. We are doing our what we are elected to do on behalf of parliament. So um, let's give you that. Let me hear what uh, honorable members saying. Uh, can I get hands, honorable members? What is your view? Chair. Honorable Natasha. Uh, thank you very much, Chair. I think you, you have represented us well, Chair. I think they need to withdraw the report and come back at a time um, when they are, are ready with uh, uh, um, information that they can take full responsibility for. Because we can't have at this level getting information and then a person will say no, this information is a draft information. It's raw. Uh, 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 I can't be held accountable of, of, of that line and that line. They must come and re re report information that we can hold them to account to say, this is the report that you have, uh, have tabled in front of the committee and we are holding you to that report. So if we take this report like this and we're putting it out as members of parliament that wants to hold them account, a person can just blankly say, no, but we told you that is raw information. And that is not how we do work of parliament. This must never happen. And I can just say, thanks God, Chairperson, that it's at least happened on Zoom. Imagine if they would have used money traveling to Cape Town and such mistakes at this level are happening for people that are, are, are in charge of an institution that have to ensure that uh, 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 women are, are, are getting help, women are kept safe. And at this level, they act clumsy and clownish like they have done now. We are doing work. We don't have time. Parliament is closing on Friday. So this is a now another yet again, a meeting wasted. 
time wasted because we as members of parliament, we sit on several committees and now we have spent an hour coming and listening to some clownish arrangement. And it must never ever happen again, Chairperson, but thank you very much, Demas Rodero, this report. We don't have time for such clownishness. Thank you, Chair. Okay, thank you very much, Honorable Natasha. Honorable Sharif. Uh, th thank you very much, Chairperson. I must fully agree with you. This report, we cannot uh, consider it. We must send it back. Um, and they must come back with updated, correct information. Because honorable members are absolutely correct, Chairperson. Imagine somebody is new to our committee and they haven't been getting the information we've been getting. And then, like you said, the CGE is back again in the newspapers um, for another weekend, uh, giving non-updated information to the portfolio committee. Um, Chairperson, I just wanna make something very clear. And, and I hope the department and other entities are listening in. Chair, this, our portfolio committee must stop being taken so lightly, Chairperson. You know, we come here to do our job and represent women on the ground. And so, number one, when we are being told we are interfering, when we're asking difficult questions, when reports are bringing here that doesn't have updated information, when we're reading that the CGE is a mess in the newspapers, when commissioners are naming victims in their reports without their consent, it's a problem, Chairperson. It's a problem. And this problem is, is being manifested out into our committee and, and we will not accept it. So any department, whether it's the CG or the woman or, or the Department of Women or the NYDA, if you bring a report that you are not 100% sure of, rather don't bring it because we cannot accept it in this committee, Chairperson. And, and I want to make this very clear and I agree with, with Honorable Natasha, let this be the last time. Thank you, Chair. Thank you very much, Honorable Sharif. Honorable Masigo. Uh, thank you very much, Honorable Chairperson. I've been covered by, by, by the Honorable Members and yourself, Chairperson. I think we must agree. Um, uh, in her admission, the Chairperson of the Commission had noted that this is indeed a report that has not been finalized. The comprehensive report, uh, she has indicated we should, with the findings, uh, uh, um, must we must expect it by the end of the financial year. And she had indicated also that no conclusions have been drawn until the study is completed, which tells us, Chairperson, that the study itself has not uh, been completed. I then fully agree, based on that, Chairperson, that maybe let us put it off until the study itself has been concluded, as well as the comprehensive report has been discussed and agreed by the plenary, then brought to us as, as a portfolio committee. We truly, Chairperson, cannot uh, 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 discuss raw information, especially because, you know, the situation has changed drastically in relation to the board itself. They have moved from the, the top of establishing a board to, 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 to putting forward a bill, which then, uh, which then tells us that, 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 that those are two uh, different, totally different scenarios. So at this stage, Chairperson, with the situation having changed and the report not having been completed, I think we should um, uh, put it off. I agree with uh, your proposal and maybe deal with it once the comprehensive report has been dealt with thoroughly and discussed and adopted at plenary, then brought, brought forward to us. The information, Chairperson, that we are sharing on this platform is, 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 is information for public consumption. Now we can't be part and parcel of, of confusing uh, the public in on or in relation to the current status of uh, of of the council itself. So I think it's important, Chairperson, that when we bring information to this platform, especially because we are broadcasting 
live on, on, on social media platforms and you've got a number of interested parties that would like to know and be updated in relation to the progress on this matter. So it's important that the information that we are processing is not information that is raw, it's information that has been uh, dealt with and we can give assurance that no, uh, currently the status of the matter that we are discussing is, 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 is at this stage. So it's important that um, uh, probably chairperson you had made a suggestion that uh, you could have taken a, 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 the, the route of informing the portfolio committee that you are not ready with the report and the information currently has not been thoroughly, thoroughly processed. We will take that chairperson as an apology on your part that you have not informed us prior to the presentation itself that uh, the information that we are processing here is still raw information. But the proposal chairperson that we shelved this for now is supported. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Honorable Masigo. Honorable Ngobo. Uh, thank you, Chairperson. Chairperson, I also share the concerns that the honorable members have raised. And I agree with you, Chairperson, that the CGE must take this report back so that when they come back, they come back with the information that is uh, updated and that the honorable members can be able to engage